How can you go on if you don't have a passion? You have to have some kind of passion, something that makes you want to get out of bed in the morning, something that gets you through the hard times. When things get really bad, sometimes you don't want to do anything. The one thing I always wanted to do, no matter how bad I felt, was music. It would give me energy. It, music is just the rhythm of the universe, right? My name is Jade Louie and at HEP Free Hawaii I do health fairs so I go set up a table with a model of a liver to inform people how to prevent getting hepatitis and also to get tested to find out if they have it and then uh, if they do have it to get treated. I've lived in a lot of places. Yeah, I've lived in many places. I've lived in Alabama, Florida, Tennessee, New York, South Dakota, California, Texas, of course, New Orleans, of course, um, Bangkok. <laughs> and I moved here in 1996, and I've been here since. I love teaching music. The kids are, and the grown-ups, I have some grown-ups that are, that should be, have their own sitcom, their own reality show. <laughs> and um, it's, it's just fun. It's, it's fun teaching them and watching them learn songs and it, it's just very rewarding. And then watching them perform, it's, it's fun. I started professionally when I was very young. I, I started singing in a country band. I love Hawaiian music. That's probably my favorite. I love the Casimero brothers, Kelly E. Rachel, Sister Roby. Um, but I also love um, all kinds of music. I like Eric Clapton, and I can't say I don't love country anymore. I still love country. <laughs> I play the ukulele, I play slack key guitar and Hawaiian steel guitar. I haven't done much with it because I guess the illness actually took a big chunk out of my life that I, I wasn't very productive. I believe it was about the year 2000 when I was diagnosed. Um, before that, I had been having pains on my right side and I'd been extremely tired, like drained. I told the doctor, and I told him, no, it's not regular tired. I'm really exhausted. And he just told me it was all in my mind. I wasn't diagnosed for a long time. And then got a different doctor and told her my symptoms. And she said, have you ever been tested for hepatitis? And I said, no. And she said, oh my God. <laughs> and so she tested me and it was positive. Of course, at that time, I didn't really know what it was. Most people and the doctors certainly back then didn't take it seriously. They, they didn't test people. They didn't realize how devastating it is. And p even now today, when somebody is diagnosed with cancer, they get a lot of support from family and friends. People don't expect them to be 100%. When you have hepatitis, nobody understands. It's, it's seriously like you ran a marathon every day. But you can't rest. You have to go to work. You can't go to sleep. It's a time when you really, really need support. People don't think, oh, you might have got a transfusion or you might have worked in the, in the health industry, you know, or something like that. They always think the worst. So I didn't tell a lot of people. Kids don't really understand. You know, you, you, they don't know. I mean, doctors didn't know, so how can you expect the kids to know? When I was really sick, I didn't have a lot of energy to interact with my son. And um, so that's, that's something that makes me sad when I think about it. 
you know, when I found out my mom had hepatitis C, it, it definitely really, really, really affected me. Um, you know, you, you never want somebody you love to be suffering, but I think what most affected me was the, the idea that I would lose her to the disease. Um, it was very, very kind of traumatic. I was, I was a lot younger at the time, and um, I just remember being afraid all the time that you know, I would come home and, and my mom would not be there. And so um, it definitely um, made me appreciate life much more, the fragility of life, how fragile everybody's life is and how delicate um, the human body is and how, how, you know, fortunate we are to have every day and every moment together. When things go wrong, as they always do in life to all of us, the most important thing is to have hope and my Buddhist practice gives me hope that I can turn everything around. Whatever it is, I can turn it around. And I know that because I have, in the past, turned many things around. I isolated myself in the beginning. I guess I've always kind of been kind of um, macho girl. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't like people to see my vulnerable side if I can help it. You, you know, you can get into this thing where you get depressed and you just kind of give up and you get hopeless and you think, oh, I'm gonna die anyway. So, I, I mean, I was thinking that way for a long time. I was like, oh, I'm gonna die anyway, so it doesn't matter, you know, I don't have to do this, I don't have to do that. And um, you get to where you just withdraw. Doing the health fairs, before it was important because I wanted to educate people and get them tested and make sure they knew the options that were available if they did test positive. But now it's even more important because I'm cured and I can show people, yes, there's hope. The treatment only takes two or three months. For me, it was three months because my viral load was so high. And it's just one pill a day. And they told me, well, you're gonna get, you might have side effects of being tired and having headache. And I said, well, I feel like that every day anyway. So, and it was three months. And then when I went, you have to have a blood test every few months after that to make sure you don't relapse. And the last time I went, the doctor told me that, you know, I, I have negative now. I have, I have no viral load. It's undetectable. So many people here are affected and don't know that they have hepatitis C. A lot of people are born with hepatitis B, and some people are born with hepatitis C, and they don't know it. And if you feel bad all the time, you don't know that there's another way to feel. So it's just normal to you, and then until it starts getting worse. And I have to get that word out to people so that as many people as possible can get tested and there is a cure now and it's not the year-long torture that you used to have to do and um, there's always hope and that you can get out of this and you can recover and you can have a normal life. Even though we're suffering and you know she had hepatitis like we're still alive and able to you know talk and eat and play music and we have a lot to be grateful for. That's you know. the one thing, I mean, if <laughs> I could be half dead, I could still do music. Yeah. I used to write hardcore uh, country music, crying your beer songs. But now I, um, I've gotten away from that and I try to write songs with a purpose, with a meaning to encourage people. And those kind of things that have a message, that's the kind of music that I like to write. No matter what, if you have hepatitis, or if you have cirrhosis, or whatever disease or illness or whatever you have that's detrimental, you can overcome it.
Could yeah. you hear his guitar? Yeah, no, it sounded really good. Cool. It actually sounded good without it, and I thought it was.